SEOs love to seek opinions on what tools other SEOs are using. In this video, I will be sharing my personal SEO tools stack from keyword research to content optimization and link building. Stick around. Hello everyone, this is Omar. For those who are listening to me for the first time, I'm the founder of an SEO and link building agency, Growth Winner. Whether I am having conversation with an SEO at the conference or sharing my thoughts in Facebook groups, one common thing that people are generally looking for is the recommendation of best tools. To me, none of the tools are good or bad because it all depends on the use case and what steps you take use a specific tool. For example, some people only consider Ahrefs search volume and some people hate it as it's not accurate according to them. So here's what I personally use and Yes, none of them are sponsoring this video to get featured. Let's start with hosting. Because a good host is just like the foundation of a building. I have tried everything from Bluehost to any other hosting you see on ads, but I found Fast Comet and WPX the best. If you are on the budget, choose the first one, and if your website is making good money, then opt for the later one. Page builders. Though I love custom websites because you can control the code and hence less block on website that result in much better speed. Since it's way easier to build a website with a drag and drop, so we use Elementor. Wait, Elementor but why it's bad yes i know but when using the elementor plugin as a page builder we use hello elementor theme with that you get tons of customization options in this way the thing that i hate about elementor is that it always adds unnecessary code to each page that results in a large draw compared to elementor cadence is best yes i intentionally shared it after elementor for each website where we use cadence we always get really good website loading time for those who are using shopify i love hello theme it's very simple and most of the clients have the website already built when they reach out to us for optimization we generally go with the current theme unless it's a requirement to change the theme for better user experience now keyword research so the first step in any seo campaign is researching keyword or in modern terms creating a topical map yes i know the topical map isn't a list of targeted topics but we aren't discussing that in this video so to get the data for keywords whether i am reverse engineering competitors or creating a list from seed keyword i use href that's the only tool that does it all so the debate for which tool has got the best data for search volume, I have been using keywords everywhere for the past six years now. But I think the search volume data is deeply flawed as the case presented by Kevin Endick in Chiang Mai SEO conference. And the biggest problem I see with these tools is that they mostly average out the data over the course of a year or at least six months. If it says the search volume is 600 for a keyword, that doesn't imply 600 people are searching for it. It's an average of the previous months. I would highly recommend you checking out my video on keyword research to learn some out of the book strategies for keywords. And soon I will be publishing an SOP style video on keyword research that will allow you to do keyword search for any project in any niche. Hit the bell icon if you want to be notified. Silos. So after we have a list of keywords with us, the next step is to organize them into logical hubs and create silos. This also allows us to cluster the similar intent keywords in one place. For this, I used Keyword Cupid. The creator of this tool is an OG data scientist in SEO, Leo. If a thought just came to your mind, oh yeah, I will just ask ChatGPT to cluster those keywords for me, then you might be missing the actual process of clustering keywords in one group. When you search for two keywords on Google and three or more websites appear for it, then they should be added in the same group and targeted in the same article rather than creating a different page or post about it. And ChatGPT can't do that yet. That is browsing all of them once on Google in real time and then matching them to put inside the same group and later on creating the cluster. That's mainly the idea. Try doing that with an iPad. Now onto the thing that's still pretty difficult to crack. Yes, difficult even with AI, content writing. Content here is anything that is text-based or even images. We mainly use ChatGPT to write any type of content because at the end of the day, all AI content tools are using OpenAI API. I have made the process super easy and smooth in my content writing series using ChatGPT. Go check it out. Other than Chat, if you have to write the content faster for blog posts, then autoblogging.ai is the first choice. I have tested various AI content tools and found it best. Content optimization. Once the content is written, the next step is to optimize it for search engine. ChatGPT is tricky when you ask it to optimize the content unless you know the rules of natural language processing, aka NLP, and how it works in the backend. So I would suggest not using ChatGPT for optimizing the content. Otherwise, it will just mess up. So to identify the semantic phrases and entities for a keyword, I use topicalrelevance.com. And to extract the entities from text, Google's NLP API and Text Tracer both works perfectly. And that is when you are doing optimization 
automation part manually. To automate the whole thing, we use Surfer SEO. And some clients will literally ask you to write Surfer optimized content. So if you are selling this to the client, you can create it as an additional benefit and charge a bit higher to optimize the content for them on page SEO. To identify the primary keyword placement and use other features for page level on page optimization, I use a rank math over Yoast or any other tool. For other things like content briefs, we are not using any tool yet. It's all made by thoroughly researching the competitors and finding the content gap. Those surfer and autoblogging AI are good at content briefs, but if we talk about semantics, they aren't that perfect. Internal links. For internal links, we plan it before the website is live, but for our already made WordPress websites, we use Link Whisper for that. Indexing. Once the content is written, optimized, and published on the website, the tricky part that still remains is indexing, and especially is the case when you are using programmatic SEO as your base strategy. For that, Omega Indexer is working really well as for recording this video. I tried Index Me Now in the past, but it's expensive when it comes to large websites with 100,000 plus pages. The next list is gonna be way longer because it's my favorite topic, link building. For prospecting, we used to do it with Ahrefs, but now we have built our in-house tool with Google Scraper API and Ahrefs to make the process faster and save time. But I think you wouldn't need it because we automated this as we are managing link building campaigns for our clients. To find emails, we use Softec Lab. It's the deepest and works best. You can use 100.io if you have a good budget or Snow.io if you need a better alternative. But if you ask me, I would choose Softec Lab for that. And once we have emails in hand, it's time to verify them. The best and inexpensive tool that I have found yet is Bulk email checker. Narrowbounce is also a good choice but it's a bit expensive. Since we send emails in bulk, even personalized, for that we need domains that can be burned. I mean, if they get flagged, we don't have any problems. So we use Namecheap to buy them. And once the domains are bought, we need to have the email accounts to use for sending those emails. So for email hosting, nothing works best other than G Suite itself. And lastly, and that's probably the one I have been asked a lot of times, email sender. We only use instantly for that because that tool is designed to send emails in bulk. By the way, if you guys want to learn how to execute link building campaigns using these tools, I have a full series on my channel that I will be updating in future as well. Check it out. Backlink sorted. For auditing the backlinks, we have three tools. Ahrefs, very obvious, <laughs> Majestic, pretty powerful, and Link Research Tools, which is expensive but worth it. Again, we have our own property index that we calculate based on the data gained from these tools to lay out the plan for links for our clients. You can reach out to me using the link in the description if you need help with your link building strategy for your or your client's website. Technical SEO. Over the years, we have developed in-house scripts and automations in Google Sheets that audit everything from content to technical issues and links and then build an action plan based on the data. But before doing that, Screaming for worked really well. I have a full video on technical and content SEO audit on my channel that should give you the idea on how to execute it for small to medium-sized websites. Analytics Next up, that tools I use for any sort of analytics. First, Google Search Console and Google Analytics. Pretty basic tools, right? Yes, I know. <laughs> but the point is, you get so much data that can be used to build best content strategies and analyze user behavior. If you want me to share the strategies I use based on the data in GSE, let me know in the comments and I will shoot it over. And another tool that really helps with behavior analytics as well as heat maps is Hotjar. I have been using it since the start of my SEO career and it works best. Whether it's a client's website or my own project, I always install Horjar so it can record what actions Wister performed and how we can improve it further for better conversion rates. Tracking. Now, there are two tools out of which one is really important for client reporting, that is rank tracking. So for rank tracking, after testing a bunch of tools, I use a Surfbot. As for checking the uptime for the server, although it comes with all good hostings, but just to make sure, I use Uptime Robot to see if the server went down any second. Its free version should just work fine. Speed optimization. One thing that falls under the technical aspect is website speed. While working with WordPress as a CMS, WBrocket with Cloudflare works just perfect. And I have a complete tutorial on optimizing for low time where I laid out optimizing the speed as low as 800 milliseconds. Check out that video as well. Citations. Beside all of the technical aspects in SEO, when optimizing a local business, citations are one of the key elements. I have been using Bright Local for citation management and even when we need new citations. If it is expensive, you can have your VA just do the same. But for local SEO management and even client reporting, you may need to opt for its paid plan. Email marketing. 
Now, after recent crazy Google updates, people are looking to diversify traffic and monetization channel. The first step they take, and I think every SEO should be doing it, being a marketer, is email. So for email marketing, especially newsletter signups for all of our projects, we use a MailChimp. I have heard really good things about Klaviyo, but the team member who is working across all the projects is well versed with MailChimp. So we stick with our choice. Project management. All right, we're done. Now, before I go, since most of my audience are agency owners running remote teams, they often have issues attracting the employee times and tasks. So for any project management, we use Trello. And for time tracking, we use Hubstaff. Tracking time is even important when you are working with contractors or freelancers on an hourly basis. That's it for this video. All the links to the tools are in the description and some of them are my affiliate links such as posting. Please feel free to check them out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.